Hi everyone, my name is Allison Cosby and I'm Connor Prairie's exhibit developer. And today I'm here to talk to you about some of our largest collections objects, our buildings. And if their walls could talk, they might tell you about their lives before they were moved or reconstructed here at Connor Prairie. So today I'm going to share with you some of the secret lives of Connor Prairie buildings. Now behind me is the Curtis family's home, but it was once the home of the Berger family. It was built in Henry County, Indiana, around 1832 to 1835. And it was built on the National Road. That was the first real major improved highway funded by the federal government in the country. And some reports suggest that it was a frequent stop for the, the travelers and the stages that went through that area. And when it was being reconstructed here at Connor Prairie, our staff made a fascinating discovery. Buried in the walls behind layers of hand-painted wallpaper were newspapers, including one that was identified as a Cincinnati newspaper from 1862. So it's little pieces and clues like this that help us piece together the past. You might know this building as the telegraph office in our 1863 Civil War journey area, but it's actually played many roles here at Connor Prairie. This is one of the buildings that was moved to the property by our founder, Eli Lilly, and he found it near his uh, vacation home at Lake Wawasee in Syracuse, Indiana. There, it had been the schoolhouse of Mrs. Hazel Gantz. And when it was moved to the property in about 1970, it was in very poor condition, probably because the Gantz family had been using it to store corn. So it was extensively restored and it became the Prairie Town School. But since it was built around 1850, it's a little bit too late for Prairie Town. So it was moved to a different spot on the property. And now it's our telegraph office. You might know this large house as the home of Prairie Town's doctor, Dr. Campbell. And believe it or not, this actually was a doctor's house. This was once the home of Dr. A.G. Ruddle, who was the first physician to practice in Allisonville, which is now the area around 82nd Street and Allisonville Road. And he was actually practicing medicine in the 1830s, just like Dr. Campbell. And a good portion of this house is original too. So you probably know about William Connor's brick home on our property, but that was not his first home. When he arrived in Indiana, he first set up a more modest trading post and log cabin somewhere on this property. Now, when Eli Lilly arrived, he found this building inside a more modern building. And testing of the timbers suggests that they were cut down between 1740 and 1820. So it's possible that this could be William Connor's first cabin, but we just don't know for sure. The double pen barn in our Civil War journey area presents another interesting mystery. It was built in the early to mid 19th century in Bentonville, Indiana. And all along these timbers, people from the past have carved their names. But who were they? Here we see one carving, Mrs. C.S. Aubel, 6, 28, 11. Who was she? Well, we're able to find in a 1910 census record, a mention of a Clarence S. Aubel, who was married to a woman named Lucy. That's a pretty good clue, but how do we know that's our Mrs. C.S. Aubel? Well, we know that this barn was given to us by the Munger and Flum families. And in a 1929 Richmond newspaper, we see an obituary for a Mrs. Munger, survived by her sister, Mrs. Lucy Aubel. So I'd say we can consider this mystery closed. But do any of these other names sound familiar to you? And remember, vandalism is never cool. And when you vandalize historic buildings, you make it harder for us to understand the clues to the past that are there. So don't do it. And not all of our historic buildings are actually historic. It might not look like it, but our carpenter shop is only about 10 years old. Because here at Connor Prairie, we have a talented group of carpenters and tradespeople who are able to make new old buildings for us. So not only are we preserving buildings from the past, but we're preserving skills and building techniques from the past as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this look, the secret lives of Connor Prairie's buildings. We'll see you again soon.